I just want Lifetime to stop torturing me. I, I just... Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. We finally reached the recap for Married at First Sight. So we're here at episode number 13. Chloe says it's the morning after wedding dress shopping and it's all starting to set in for her that she's actually going to get married to a stranger. So as you can see, it is 23 days until decision day and I have never been more anxious and ready for a decision day as I am in this season. This was the worst, one of the worst, because I've seen some really bad seasons. Austin and Becca are at this garden boutique place and Austin signed them up for a, um, actually they were signed up by the producers, but you know what, y'all are annoying. Anyway, Austin supposedly signed them up to have a sexy naked people figurines terrarium building class I am not lying to you. I am wondering what the hell Austin had to Google to find this freaking place. Who told you that this was sexy? Becca is sitting here and um, I'm going to spare you all the BS that they talked about. It was very sexual. It was very awkward to watch. It was very annoying. I'm not even going to lie. The first time I tried to watch it, I bypassed this entire scene because I was disgusted. And I'm no prude. Honey child, I'm no prude. I'm very open-minded. But... Stop talking. Y'all doing so much talking and y'all not doing no action. Okay, it's really annoying. Becca was asking him if he liked to do it outside. Um, Austin brings up pegging again. Austin, you want to be pegged? Cause, and please don't ask me what that is. Just go Google it because there's no clean way for me to talk about that. All right. Okay, so let's just go to the next scene because that's all I have to say about this. Cameron's going into surgery and he didn't feel the need to tell Claire about it or whatever. It's what he claims. I don't care. I don't know why y'all are still here. Goodbye. So now we have Emily and Brennan. Brennan says to Emily that he wasn't in the perfect headspace to talk last night, but he feels much better now. Brennan, your head has plenty of space. It's very empty. I don't, I don't really know what the hell you're talking about. Anyway, Emily says that she, she will go back to what she said last night. And she says that she kind of snapped. She wasn't trying to attack him or put him on the spot, but basically she was just irritated that he didn't want to answer any questions. Emily tells Brennan that she feels like there's just a lack of effort. He doesn't even try. Emily tells Brennan that she feels like he's already shutting down. Emily said that she snapped basically because they were trying to so-called have a quote reset and his actions made her feel bad. Brennan says that he understands that she didn't feel supported and he knows that it's a lack of effort. And Brennan, what script are you reading from this week? Because you're trying to act understanding is very unlike you. I mean, according to all of the episodes that I've watched, you seem to be very rigid and unforgiving and unkind. Brennan goes on to say that he's trying to do right by Emily. Now I know you're reading a script. You know what? Reality TV has really become so scripted. I really miss the real world. Brennan says that he messed up and he claims that he's not trying to hurt Emily. He apologizes for hurting her. Brennan says that he's going to work on the way that he comes across and his delivery. So Emily says that she appreciates the fact that Brennan was open to have a civil conversation about it. But if his actions are not going to reflect his apology, then um, they're still not going to work out. So now Dr. Pepper suggested that the both of them do a writing exercise where they're writing to their old high school self. I really don't know what this is supposed to do for the relationship, but she's the doctor. I'm not. Okay. So they both write down things they want to say to themselves. Emily talks about how hard her dad was on her, how he made her cry, he made her angry and upset, pushing her mostly in sports and soccer, she says. That is some trauma that producers, I be wondering if y'all be asking people to go back into like 20 years ago on purpose for drama's sake. Brennan actually said something that was very telling and I don't know if anybody caught that. When it was Brennan's turn to do the writing exercise and he was talking to his high school self and he was saying that he pushed himself to be grown too soon and he wished that he wouldn't have. He also mentioned that his parents loved him, even though they have a funny way of showing it sometimes, which to me, like I said, is very telling. You know, your parents have a lot to do with who you are as a person when you grow up. So I don't know what trauma Brennan has faced. And I really, really wish he wasn't so anti-therapy. I don't know exactly what could make him better mentally. But he has witnessed a lot of things over the past, I don't know, maybe his entire life. 
that have geared how he is and it is affecting him negatively because to me i see a narcissist i see somebody controlling i see someone emotionally abusive and he's gonna need to get that worked out for the next marriage because i know this one ain't gonna work emily says that it's progress for Brennan in growth. And she says that she's getting a sense of why Brennan is the way that he is. It is 22 days until decision day and Claire is boo-hooing and belly aching about Cameron still. Didn't you guys decide to split? Why are you still here? We don't care. The marriage is over. You guys called it quits. I'm really sorry not to sound heartless, but I don't care about your feelings. So now we're having this grilling and barbecue thing with the couples. And Claire, why are you here still? I don't understand why Claire is here. And she's talking with the ladies and she needs to go back to the hotel and move out because that's what normally happens when you divorce. Brendan is here with Austin talking about how him and Emily have reset the relationship. So Brendan tells Austin they're in a good place. They're trying. And Emily is saying... It's so hard to understand what the hell Emily means sometimes because the way she talks is so freaking weird. I do think you're intelligent, but I really think that you need to read more books because your vocabulary is very limited, ma'am. I'm really sorry because I'm just like not understanding what the hell she's saying. I have to keep rewinding, bro. Emily says that it's a challenge because they keep trying to say the things they want to say or some crap. And Claire, first of all, Claire, you shouldn't even be here. And then you're going to say, um, well, both of you are reactive. That is so not true about Emily. So Emily disagrees with that and says that she thinks that they just have two different communication styles. Yeah, Brennan's communication style is none. And your communication style is to be open and honest. Okay, that's never going to work. Emily says, you know, I, I, I pretty much almost lost it that day. Claire's like, you're only human. To end out this convo, Emily says that she has to stay positive. She's an optimist and she's going to take it day by day. She jokes day by day. Brennan says, what's great about this reset is that we have no expectation or plans. We're just taking it. You know what I'm getting ready to say. So Becca says, did you ever think that we'd be here a month and a half and have not, none of us had sex? Of course she bring up sex conversation because she just talks about it all the damn time. Claire says, I see you guys being all lovey-dovey. I'm surprised you haven't had sex. Just like all of us. We're surprised. So Becca says, everything is progressing wonderfully, except Becca wants Austin to put her to bed, bed, bed. Don't you like it so first? <laughs> she wants him to put her to bed, god darn it. So Austin talks about him and Becca and lets Brendan know that Becca is more sex driven than he is. And I'm gonna tell you something about a heterosexual man. Now, I don't know a whole lot about y'all because y'all are very confusing sometimes. But one thing I do know is when a man is into you, Oh, he gonna have sex with you the first night. He gonna have sex with you the first night, okay? Um, barring if he's like a pastor or a bishop, they might hold back a week or two. But honey, if a heterosexual man is into you, and I'm not gay, so I can tell you about homosexual men, okay? I'm not gay, I'm not a man, but I'm just saying I'm a woman. And what I can tell you about a heterosexual man, men, get in the comment section if I'm lying. And I'm not saying y'all gonna jump on any old thing, because y'all are very picky. Some of y'all, not all y'all, but a lot of y'all are very picky. Y'all not just gonna do anybody. But what I'm saying is, if a man is into you, let me give a percentage. If a man is into you, I'm going to say 92% of the time he going to be down to do you, baby. I'm sorry, y'all. A man going to do you right there. So what's the hold up, Austin? Because I think Becca's a very nice spirit, honestly. I mean, I get annoyed with all the sex talk, but let's be real here. You know, when you're accustomed to relationships being a certain way and then they're not that way and you, you don't feel desired, of course you're going to bring it up. If the shoe was on the other foot and Austin was pressuring Becca to have sex, he would be looked at as a sleazeball, wouldn't he? Wouldn't he? So Austin says it started out her wanting the, about the sex thing. It started out small and then it just grew and grew and grew. And every time they turn around, they're talking about it constantly. And then Austin says something so confusing that I'm not even going to try to translate. I'm just going to play what he said for you guys after he said this sex talk has been growing and growing and growing. So the problem isn't like the problem itself, but like what has like come out of problem. And now she goes on to talk about Cameron and girl, I do not care. Okay. Y'all already know the situation. I'm not omitting any information at this point right now. Cameron is having surgery and that's all. She's telling you about her feelings, about his surgery, about the support that she needs to give Cameron. And I do not care. Michael is giving this damn crown the parade that it deserves. He greets everybody. 
Michael is here to update the couples in person, single person, Claire, on what's going on with him and his getting married situation. And when I tell you I ain't got time to sit here and listen to Michael run his mother freaking lips, I am really sorry. He talks so damn much. And I know y'all are probably saying you got your damn nerve. The gang gives him props for being willing to go through this again. Michael offers them an invitation to go to the wedding, which I knew was coming. I knew that was coming. Brennan is now here with his friend Richie on video chat. He calls him the master of marriage. Richie, you look like you're single. You never had a woman in your life. So sorry. I'm not so sorry. I know that's not nice, but I'm just saying. Richie lets Brennan know that once one little thing bothers him, once that gets in his brain, he's over it. And that's just the type of person that he, he is. Richie says that when, you know, he let him know that there was no romantic connection, he worries that, you know, pretty much Brennan is just gonna shut down. Brennan says to Richie, well, we had lunch and dinner together last week. Does that make you feel better about it? And Richie says, um, I can have dinner with my friends. Doesn't mean I want to, you know, have a romantic relationship with them. Brennan, are you serious? I hate to be calling you empty headed, but the stuff that you say sometimes really is leading me to believe that your head is full of a bunch of rocks and not actual brain matter. And it's not my fault. It's not me being mean. It's the stuff that you say makes no freaking sense at all. Richie says that he thinks that Brennan is getting too stuck into the emotions of what life should be. And then Brennan says that he feels kind of stuck right now. What did you think Married at First Sight was going to be, Brennan? Why did you even sign up? Like, what made you sign up? And Brennan says that they're going to talk about more serious stuff this week. And he hopes that that will expand the emotional connection. Richie asks Brennan if he thinks there's a chance that this can improve. And Brennan with his freaking force-fed, scripted response. Emily is one of the best people I ever met in my life, but yet you've been treating her with disrespect all these weeks. Brennan, shut the hell up. So Austin and Becca have this huge dialogue about the fact that they have to talk to Dr. Pia. Is the show not long enough? Dr. Pia knocks on the door, she sits down, and she's wondering how are you guys doing since the last time we talked? And they said they're good, and she says, well, I'm wondering, you know, we talked about Let's not talk about intercourse, but let's talk about the other things that you said you were open to. How's that going? And they didn't even do the other things. So Austin admits that they have not progressed much and he feels bad about it. I tell you guys, it makes me so uncomfortable having to hear about these people's sex lives. I mean, there's certain things that I feel should be personal and private, but look at what show we're watching here. So Austin admits that they fooled around, whatever the hell that means. They fooled around in bed and Dr. P is asking Becca, how was it? How was that? Rebecca said it was okay. It was good, except she hasn't had a relationship that has moved this slowly in the past. Rebecca says that she doesn't feel as desired as she has felt in past relationships. And Austin says, that's where I want to squash that part because it's not that I don't find you attractive. It's just that I move slower than most. Dr. Pia asks Becca, when you hear him say that, how does it make you feel? And Becca says, Becca says, it's hard for her to hear that he finds her attractive, yet on the other hand, he wants to take it slow with her, intimacy-wise. So Dr. Pia lets Austin know, you know, Becca finds you hot. She's ready to roll. What is it that's holding you back? Austin says he doesn't know. It seems like all of a sudden, that's all they were talking about. And basically what I gathered from what he was saying is that now the pressure's on. He feels pressured and it just makes him get in his head about it. And Becca says what she didn't want. She didn't want this to come off as if this is a favor to her. And Austin says that's not what he wanted either. And Dr. Pia says, yes, now there's a spotlight and you feel like you're, you know, watching your every move. And I want to help you. I want to help you. You want to help the show get ratings, Dr. Pia. Anyway, she says, you know, when you guys have fooled around, and as much as I want to sing fooling around by changing faces, I will not do it. Dr. Pia asks Austin, what? was it that made him stop taking it further when they were in the act austin's response was simply that he was all in his head um how i'm not trying to judge you austin i'm really not but what is there to be in your head about are you worried you're not going to satisfy becca do you have a small peter i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm just curious i just want to know so dr pia's solution is that foreplay is missing there is no play at all. What are you talking about? 
four plays missing. There's no play. There's no play going on here. And, you know, Becca has said that she would be okay with longer makeout sessions. Child, making out is for teenagers. I ain't got time for that. Let's get it. Let's get it popping. We're adults here. Dr. P, are you really trying to make me, uh, me and the viewers very uncomfortable with these conversations that she wants them to have? So Dr. Pia suggests that they have more sexual conversation during the day because foreplay doesn't only have to be physical. Foreplay is really physical, so I don't know what the hell she's talking about. But anyway, she wants them to have more sexual conversation during the day, which I thought they talked about sex too much already. But thanks a lot, Dr. Pia. So Dr. Pia asks Austin and Becca, what do they consider foreplay? And Becca says she's a firm believer that foreplay does not have to be always a sexual, physical thing. You know, it can be just the way you touch somebody, just the way you look at somebody. And then Austin says, that's all new for him. I'm really sorry about this screen grab. Okay, forgive me. But that's all new for you? Foreplay is new for you? Or are you meaning the way she's describing foreplay is new for you? I'm hoping it's the latter. So Dr. Pia asks Becca if she would be willing, since she's in the forefront, to initiate the foreplay sooner and Becca says she doesn't want Austin to feel pressured so Dr. Pia says how would you feel if you got like you know a kind of sexy text message from Becca would that make you feel pressured and Austin says he doesn't know but he's willing to try it and Dr. Pia says maybe you know y'all are so about talking about it and not doing it so Dr. Pia advises that they're going to remove any expectation of things happening in any particular way. And that will hopefully take away some of that pressure. So it's one day until Michael and Chloe's wedding. And when I tell you guys I couldn't be less interested in a freaking mid-season mother freaking wedding, this all should have been done at the beginning. I understand the situation was to where, you know, it couldn't be, but I like already talked about weddings and wedding rehearsals and dressing and all this crap and they're making me do it again in the middle of the season is really irritating i'm not even gonna lie about it y'all chloe has a spa day michael's feeling anxious there's really nothing extra i have to say about this scene so now brendan and emily are at this indoor soccer place or whatever the hell place yeah um this isn't formulated and scripted at all uh you know they thought about Coming here, they're completely by themselves. Sure they did. So Emily gets into more detail of how she was very much into sports and competitive and how she spent a lot of her weekends growing up. Okay, Emily is so good. She's really not playing with Brennan. I just was concerned the entire time I was watching. Is Brennan going to throw a freaking tantrum when he loses to Emily? That's all I was thinking about, but... Thankfully, he continued to play nice. So Emily gets into this conversation. I guess she gets more into detail now, I guess. But she gets into more detail about her dad and how he was the coach of the team and how she made it to the top and she ended up being the captain at one point. So Emily says her dad went hardcore, was buying her VHS tapes, putting her in sports clinics. So much so that it took away from her love of the sport because she was doing it all the time. So Brennan says that he actually wished that he had a coach. When you're doing things by yourself, it's kind of hard to be motivated. So I am really surprised that Brennan is actually asking questions. Did the producers pull you to the side and tell you that you're being an a-hole and you need to calm it down? Or like, because I don't understand why you have so much like, now you have questions and you care about Emily's life after all these weeks. Emily pretty much says that she didn't believe in herself and so her dad was really pushing 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 her and Brennan asks do you think that it helped you and she said yes and it has basically led her to be the leader I just want lifetime to stop torturing me I I just I just want lifetime lifetime I've been nothing but a loyal watcher for so many decades and it's just not fair what you're doing to me this season and I have to recap this show so they get a knock on the door. Austin and Becca get a knock on the door. And this is what's in a basket in front of the door. Not planned. Not planted. Just some random ass sexy truth or dare basket. And you guys need to be need to be thankful for me because I'm not going into too much detail. You can kind of you have an idea of what kind of things they're going to be talking about. I'm moving on. Really sorry, but I'm moving on. It's irritating and it's awkward and it's annoying. Guys, I really rewound it and I really want it so badly to tell you exactly what they're doing, but it's just so cheesy and I just cannot. Who thought this would be sexy? By the way, Austin, one thing I will talk about, when you said what you find most attractive on Becca is her pink hair, 
Austin, get the hell out of here. Anyway, I'm, I'm over it. She's re-meeting with Emily and Brennan. She says a lot has happened and not happened, is what I've heard, since our last meeting. As per usual, Brennan says, it feels good. It feels like we're in a good place. And look at Emily's face when he says that. Does she look like she feels like y'all are in a good place? Emily feels like there was more pushback from Dr. Pia's recommendations. You know how Brennan wanted to hug as opposed to touching each other from head to toe. Dr. Pia asks if it would be productive if they talk about that right now. And of course, Brennan says no, no, it wouldn't be. Because why? Because it's going to put him on the spot and it's going to take the control out of his hands. Brennan, you're super annoying. I hope nobody is cursed with your union in the future. And Brennan says he doesn't know where this is coming from. They had such a good day playing soccer. So you had one good day, so that negates everything else, Brennan. Brennan is all, why do we have to focus on the past? And Emily's like, well, Dr. P is here to talk about the last time she was here and why nothing has happened since then. Brennan tells Dr. Pia they did do a variation of the exercise and changed it to hugging more, which they both agreed on. Which Brennan says, yeah, we didn't hug as much, but we hugged more. And Emily says, well, you know, basically that was what he wanted to do. Brennan says hearing that from Emily is very frustrating. Why? Because it's the truth? Hmm? Because you're not going to get your way, you big freaking man baby? Because you're not going to get your freaking way the way you want? Brennan has a problem with people challenging him. Brennan says that Emily told him to come up with an idea. He comes up with an idea and she had a problem with it. And then Brennan says, now she's saying we didn't do the exercise at all. And Dr. Pia says, well, you didn't do the exercise. The exercise wasn't a hug. Dr. Pia asks Emily, why do you think that happened? And that meaning he just wanted to hug and he didn't want to do the regular exercise. And Emily says, because he didn't want to. Dr. Pia says, do you know why that is? And Emily says, she doesn't know. And Dr. Pia says, why don't you ask him? And this was Brennan's reaction. He Hold on. I don't, I just, I'm at the point now, honestly, where I'm about to be done with Married at First Sight. Like this is about to be my last season watching this show because this one was extremely painful to watch. So Dr. Pia, after Br Brennan is all, we don't, this is not going to be productive. We should just talk about something more positive. Dr. Pia says, I am noticing a lot of pushback from you, and I don't understand why that is. So as usual, Brendan is trying to control this entire conversation, saying that the intention of this was not to talk about the past, but to only stay focused on the future and to only stay focused on the positive. But Brendan, you're not in control of this conversation. And you're pissing Emily off again because she's making another face. Dr. Pia says that she's hearing two different versions of how everything is going from the two of them. On Brennan's side, she's saying she hears everything's great. Couldn't be better. Going day by day, day by day. And she says from Emily, she's saying Emily is like, I'm not getting the same experience. I need more information. Dr. Pia says to Brennan that she feels that he's holding back and she doesn't know if it's because of her presence, the dynamic between the two of them or what it is. Emily says that she tries to open up, but she feels like when she says something that doesn't go with what Brennan wants to hear, she gets comments from him, defensive comments. And then Emily makes this admission that we already knew was not being shown on the episodes. And this is what Emily has to say about Brennan. Brennan is a little reactive off camera, which isn't seen because it's not what he wants people to see. Now, why am I not surprised that Brennan is reactive when he's not on camera? I really hope you guys have some kind of security outside of their door because it's no telling when his mouth is going to turn into actions with his hands. Dr. Pia says that she gets a sense that Emily just goes along to get along, basically, with whatever freaking Brennan says. Emily says that post honeymoon, that is what was needed basically to keep things at peace. She says that being said, doesn't mean that she doesn't speak up for herself when she feels like she's not being treated well. But let's be real here. There are many times that he did and said things that you should have commented on and you didn't. But you know, we can sit here and we can sit at home and we can judge, but we are stuck in a freaking hotel room with somebody for eight weeks. We don't know how we would react. Brennan says after Dr. Pia asks, do you have anything to say about it? Brennan says that Emily always speaks her mind. So he has no idea where all of this is coming from. 
And then Brennan is like, Emily tells him something and then she's like, oh, you reacted so well. I don't know why I was so nervous to tell you that. Brennan, that comes off so fake and so freaking phony, you big fake phony liar. Liar. That didn't even come off authentic at all. At all. I want to know how much of a lie you're telling. I wish I could be inside Emily's mind, but then again, no, because if it were me in her mind, I would be changing her mind mentally to get the hell out of there. Dr. Pia asks Brennan if he thinks that he's being defensive. Brennan says that he thinks that when someone comes at him in a way that he feels is unfair, it's only natural to defend himself. So Emily says, I'm, I'm answering Dr. Pia's questions. And Dr. Pia says, yeah, I want to take responsibility that I am guiding the questions. I am guiding the conversation by asking her questions. Brennan says that they've given enough context and Dr. Pia says, in your opinion, because obviously it's not the same for Emily. Brennan is all about himself. He is such a freaking narcissist. It's not even funny. So Dr. Pia asks Brennan about his friendships. Do his friends challenge him sometimes? And Brennan says, sure, yes. Dr. Pia asks Brennan if he feels comfortable for Emily to be able to challenge him. And Brennan says he doesn't know. So are you seeing her as lower than you? Is that why you feel that way? I'm just wondering. Dr. Pia asks Brennan, what is he feeling right now? And he says that he feels blindsided. Brennan says that he thought him and Emily were in a good place. And then Dr. Pia asks him, do you trust Emily? Brennan's response was that they're building trust right now. So basically, no. So Dr. Pia asks Brennan, and sorry I'm saying Dr. Pia so much, but can't call her Pia because that's she has a title, darn it. So Dr. Pia asks Brennan, what does Emily have to do to rebuild the trust? And Emily wants to know what the hell did she do to break his trust? And Brennan says, when they say they're gonna act when they say they're gonna do things and actually do them. Well, what didn't y'all do? If anything, she shouldn't trust you. Because you were supposed to, you agreed to do so, do an exercise a certain way and you didn't do it. Dr. Pia asks Brennan. How can we leave space for someone that decides they want to change their mind? And Brennan says with communication, the doctor. But she asks Brennan, how can Emily approach you with a situation without you getting defensive? In what way can she do that? Am I allowed to disagree with Dr. Pia here? Okay, because I am. Um, she's basically given, I understand you, you want to give both people the floor and that's great. But Emily should have been allowed to ask Brennan what the hell she did to lose his trust. Basically, Brennan was over here blabbing about how, you know, all she had to do is, you know, if she has a, a change in her mind where she doesn't want to follow through with something, just come to me and let me know up front. Hey, you know, I said this, but now this has changed. Dr. P is explaining to her that basically Brennan needs somebody to not discredit his effort. He's made no effort, Dr. Pia, none whatsoever. Emily has been very agreeable, which she shouldn't have been a lot of the time. She's been open. She's been honest. She's been, she's been communicative. There's nothing more that Emily needs to do. And that is my disagreement. She needs to do nothing. So Emily basically lets Brennan know that they could be doing better. And Brennan says that he wants to do better. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, can he smack it? I'm over it. Dr. Dr. Pia asks Emily to tell Brennan, the qualities that she is looking for in a friendship. We're starting all the way from friendship and it's only like, what, two more weeks before decision day? Or is it three weeks, y'all? Three weeks until decision day almost? And we're talking about friendship. You know what, I'm tired. Well, Emily shoots off these wonderful attributes that Brennan does not possess and probably never will possess. She basically, like she always says, needs more open communication from freaking Brennan in order to move forward in the relationship. She says this every week. So Emily's still asking what the hell she did to break his trust. He's not answering that. Brennan says that he doesn't want to dwell on the past. And that's probably your biggest problem in life, Brennan. Do you know how often at my ripe old age that I sat back and have reflected on the years in the past of how I used to be and things that I've done that I wasn't proud of so I don't repeat those actions or those words. Do you know how many times I've reflected on what I've done in the past? Brennan wanting to only focus on the future, negating the past makes absolutely 
no sense whatsoever. He basically wants Emily to let him know when she disagrees, which I agree with, because girl, don't be just going along with what he says. If you don't agree, let him know. So yeah, I'm gonna need you to speak up, Emily, when he says something stupid, like um, we're gonna do things my way. And he needs to know this is a marriage. This is not a dictatorship. And it's y'all's way, not just his way. So Austin says that the lack of intimacy between him and Becca is really affecting Becca negatively. So he wants to have a way of putting this whole situation in a better place. And he says he's not clear what non-sexual foreplay is. And to be quite honest, you guys, um, that is a hunk of bull crap. We all know that foreplay is very sexual. I mean, foreplay is what you do before you have sex. So... <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't say that earlier, but I disagree with uh, Becca's definition of foreplay because that's not what she's looking to get. You're looking for like regular intimacy. Foreplay is what we're talking about before the act. It's right before the act, literally. It's not weeks before. It's not a day before. And am I just hungry or does that bed look like a sesame seed bun? <laughs> I really need to go eat some, y'all. <laughs> okay, with five minutes left in this show, you guys know they're doing a little too much sexual talk for my taste. I find it very distasteful, uncomfortable, and awkward, and I'm not going to be talking exactly about it, okay? So they're going to play Sexy Truth or Dare, and it's going to lead to, guess what it's going to lead to, guys? It's going to lead to Austin closing the door and us assuming that they're doing it, okay? And um, that's actually how this show ended. And we've made it through yet another episode. I, I'm done with this video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate everybody's views. Please put your um, please put your comments in the comment section. I will tell you this. I love seeing comments in my comment section. I respond to every single person. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe and i'll talk to you guys in the next video bye